Welcome to Cute Widgets and More in these Corona times. I hope you all stay safe and stay sane. Today, we'll talk about a tiny little itch that I've had for a while, namely headers in QList view and in QTable view, that sometimes they are too small to show the text. So I want headers that can adapt to the content. I'll show you how. Okay, let me show you exactly what I mean. If you have a look at this user interface that I have here, you can see a rather simple table with five rows and three columns. And you can see it says banned from the 80s, I love. It's a nice header because I know exactly what the Depeche Mode, the Cure Naive, Nitzreb and Erasure, what that column means. But observe what happens if I do like this. You can see that it cuts a bit away from each end so that I see in the end, it just say the, and um, around here, that would be enough with, but still I would love to have the full title so that I at least could eventually see the whole thing. The problem is the same with each of the columns. And now of the, yeah, that's difficult. On the other hand, it is quite a waste of screen real estate to have it all this right here. Okay, before I show you the code, let me use the usual disclaimer here. This is as good as I need it. It is actually from KW on my own code base, and I'm giving it for free, but do not come and complain if it has any nuances that you don't like. Let's discuss where do the content for the header come from? Well, it comes from the model. It's a header data method in the model that provides it. And where do we know about the width of the, of the, the, the pixels on the screen? Well, that's the view. So somehow they need to communicate. I'll show you now how I do this. My application as it stands now are rather simple. A license statement, some include files, my main here that has the event loop running down there. I create a simple model because I was too lazy to set up a real Q abstract table model subclass. Uh, and I populate my model. I set the horizontal header labels on that model and I set the model on the view. That's what we had already. Now let me show you what that looks like when I just do a bit of magic. I comment in the, the column header here, I comment in the uh, call there, and like this. So what I simply did was that I added a column header length adapter. So that's a, uh, that's a new class that I, I, I'm gonna show you in a, in a second. And I add that to my table. And instead of the setting up my header like this, I set up my header with model set header data. That's the, the, the regular API on Q abstract item model subclass. So header, set header data, my zeros header is in the horizontal direction is a string list. So it's not just a string anymore, it's a string list. And of course that only works because I'm receiving that list at the other end because what the Q abstract item view, so more specific, what the Q list view, the Q table view, ah, not the list view, I'll continue saying that, the Q table view and the Q tree view, what they expect, of course, in their header is a string. But I am returning string list, and I'll show you in a second how that, that works. But let me just run the application here so you can see it. If I can, there it is. So now you can see that now it just says, here I live. And if I just scroll, move this away, you can see here I live, that's uh, this string here. Because there wasn't space enough for the my patch of the universe. But if I now resize, let's resize this one here, you can see that now when there was more space, it says my patch of the universe. Let's have a look at the column header length adapter class to see what that one does. So F2 here. Column header length adapter is subclassing from Q abstract table model. Wait, what? It's subclassing from Q abstract table model. But 
you had a adapter, not the not the table itself. I'll tell you something super, super smart that the guys back from Trolltech when they implemented the model view framework they did, namely the header above your not I was about to say list view again, but above the table view and the tree view are instances of Q header view, and that header view itself has a model that it queries. And that's super clever because that way in the regular model view API, you can actually modify the font, the color, the whatever you want to. And that's what I'm app using here in this little trick. So we subclass from Q abstract table model. If I do that, I obviously need to implement the pure virtual methods that we have in there, row count, column count, data, and I'm adding an extra one, namely header data. After all, this is all about the headers. Let's see what the implementation looks like. I'm not going to go into all the gory detail of this. You can read it up yourself, but I'll just take the highlight here. So I have two constructors, one thing in table view and one thing in tree view, and both of them simply go to the view and ask for the horizontal header. I had a long discussion yesterday with one of my coworkers that thought it would be better if the column header adapter just took the Q header view. But in the end, we agreed to disagree. You can adapt the code if you prefer it looking like that. In any case, I take the table view or the tree view, I fetch the header from it, and I call an initialized method. And we'll see just below why I need to call that initialized method uh, with invoke method. It, it just means that it will be executed once I'm back at the event loop. And the reason why I want to do that, let's just scroll down there right away. Initialize, where are you? Not there, initialize. What I need to do is to go to the head of view that I got and fetch its model. Because what I want to do is set my own model on that head of view. And, uh, it might not have been set up right away. So what I do here is that I go to my head of view and I ask for its model. And if that wasn't set up, then I'll do some more things here. This is a live, real code, so I'm sure I had some good reasons for those steps. If I don't have a source model at all, that means that the head of view didn't have a model. I cannot even remember anymore why that is. Uh, but if that's the case, then just uh, ignore it and return. Otherwise, what I'll do is that I will, will set myself, remember I was a subclass of Q abstract table model, I set myself as that model, and I will do that within a begin and end reset, and I will connect to any of those changes that the real model that was connected to that view is uh, could could tell me. So change model being reset, column inserted, column removed, or column being well removed and moved. And in any of those cases, what I'll do is that I will myself emit uh, a model reset, simply saying to the head of you, you better go and ask me for all the data again. And now with this set up. I need, just need to look at what do my data method really do. And my data method, not my data method, my header data method, because that's what the Q header view will call on this model here to figure out. So if I don't have a source model, don't do anything. Otherwise, I'll go to the source model and I'll ask for the header data in this section or this orientation and the display role. And remember, it actually is a string list. We saw that in my main.cpp. It's a string list that I return. So I'll have that string list here. Okay. If it's the display row, then I will simply go and ask for the font of that uh, item that I'm, I'm looking at here. And I'll check for the text. Or I'll run through the list of headers, potential headers for this one. I'll run through that list and I'll figure out what is the width for each of them. And then if my width is less than the, the width of the section, and then 10 pixels away, just so I have a bit of space in each side. If that's the case, then I'll return this particular one. So my display role actually returns a string, as it should for the Q um, head of view to, to function. If my list is empty, um, then I'll return the last one. So if I didn't manage to find something, well, Okay, again, 
I go through here, I try to see if one of them fits. And if I get to this line here, that means that none of them fits. fits. If my list is, is not empty, hmm, well, how could that happen? I don't know. If that's the case, then I'll return the last element, which is the smallest of them. It will not fit in there, but it's the best that I can do. If I'm asking for the tooltip role, and I'll have you read through this yourself, basically what I do is that I provide, and let me see if I have my application running still. I don't. I have in a second. You can see that it says, uh, here I live, but if I move my cursor up here, it will say, my patch of the universe. So it gives me the full text up there as a tooltip. And I have this special method that I don't use anywhere, but I left it in here. I had in my real code base, I have several places where I use this method where I get a get the, the, the string list and I need to convert it into just a single element. That's it for this episode of Kid Widgets and More. The code is free for you to use in your own code base, so go ahead and do that if you like the technique shown here. In any case, please do leave your comments below and let me know what you think of this particular episode. Until next time, stay safe.